In this video, I'll go over the steps I took to draw this rose realistically. This is the fourth video in this series of how to draw realistically, but it's specifically on how to draw a rose. So what you want to do is uh, watch the first video in this series before watching this if you can. And the first video will go over the tips and techniques in much greater detail uh, and those techniques that I'll be using to uh, draw this rose. So, check that out. But as far as this rose, let's get started. So the first thing you want to do is choose your reference photo. I've got this rose printed out in such a size. It's about four inches, so it's not too small, not too big. If it was too small, it would just be way too challenging. Um, by all means, if you're intermediate or advanced, do so. But uh, if it was way too big, it would probably probably be too time consuming. And really, this is catered towards the beginner, but I think the advanced uh, artist can learn from this as well. But printed out the photo in like a four inch, you know, by three inch size. And the other thing is I've got it very close to where I'm going to be drawing. So it's printed out. It's very, couldn't be any closer because I think I get pretty much right up to that edge of where that printed out reference photo is. So this is really so that your eyes don't have to move back and forth over a great distance or like you're constantly, constantly looking up, constantly moving your head. If, if the reference photo was in a different place. So, but I'm gonna, I guess, be displaying the digital photo because it just looks better. Um, but yeah, as this graphic is showing, you're moving your eyes back and forth quickly as you're going along in the drawing. And I've chosen this certain section here as represented by that red line as to where I'm gonna start. So this is my starting point. And I'm taking my time, as you can see, to try to get those measurements and lines down accurately. And I'm using this uh, concept, which I go over in that first video of this series, of the perfect plus sign. So I've got the perfect vertical and perfect horizontal, uh, vertical being 90 degrees and horizontal being zero degrees. And I'm just imagining a plus sign at times when I'm trying to figure out certain angles. Uh, this just helps as a second reference point. Obviously, the photo is your main reference, but you need other references. Like this first line I did, it, uh, it's very close to the horizontal. So it's similar to the zero degrees angle. But as you can see, it's, not, it's definitely not a perfect horizontal zero degrees angle. So having this to be able to uh, use as a second reference point is really useful because sometimes you can't always rely on the reference photo because sometimes those lines can really seem perfectly vertical or perfectly horizontal uh, and you depict them as such but when compared to the actual perfect uh, zero degrees or 90 degrees it, it really isn't comparable. So here you've got, a, you've got that red line and blue line showing that those two lines, the decisions on the length of those two lines, they're very similar, but they're not. They're not perfectly um, exact to each other. The blue line is just a little bit longer. So if you notice in your drawing that the line you're, you've drawn to depict what that blue line is uh, representing, if you notice that it is way shorter, or if it's the exact same size, then you know to uh, make your adjustments accordingly. So really what I'm doing is I'm using adjustments or measurements that I've done to uh, be able to figure out future measurements. So here I've got that point where sometimes you can just try to figure out where this particular, particular line of that rose petal is going to end up. So I'm drawing that point first and then kind of filling in that uh, line there. 
trying to get that angle correct. So just filling in the rest of the drawing here using the same techniques where you're using measurements that you've already come up with and you're comparing them to new measurements that you're drawing. So here I've filled in a little bit of a uh, darker shadow area. So I've got a little bit of, of a value and this acts as a reference point as well. Because sometimes with a drawing like this, a reference photo such as a rose, you can kind of get lost in all of the little crenellations and lines and shadows. And uh, it's really kind of an abstract uh, thing when you think about it. And having this little um, reference point of a little bit of value, a little bit of shadow, can really help you uh, in determining where you are because sometimes you can get lost and trying to figure out all these little uh, lines and where does this intersect and you know is this going at an angle or is it going at you know a perfect horizontal uh, angle or, or what. The other technique I, I've used in the past which I uh, go over in that initial video of this series is blurring your vision on purpose. So you're doing this by squinting. You're getting your eyelashes in front of your eyes and it really just enables your brain to see this reference photo in a uh, completely different way. You're seeing it, um, you're trying to get your brain away from the fact that it's a rose. You're trying to see it in basic colors and basic uh, lights and darks, basic values. And trying to see it in basic shapes, you see there as highlighted uh, that uh, ring of highlight in that petal, and then that other subtle uh, highlight of that petal. So you've got these arcs. So maybe if you hadn't blurred your eyes, you wouldn't really see these sections as these potential arcs that are uh, more basic. So beginning to or continuing to fill in the rest of uh, the measurements. Again, I'm using those measurements by looking at the rows, obviously, but I'm also using that plus sign, which is a little bit difficult to understand at first, but I'm using previous measurements in order to determine if my future ones or present ones are working out. Like this, I've got this pedal where I can see that it is a certain length and it's very similar to that pedal that's below it. So again, if you're noticing in your drawing that those two measurements are drastically different, uh, it's time to you know get out the eraser and and make your changes now before you get too involved in the drawing. So here, just filling in uh, some grayscales, and you'll notice with. Uh, really any picture of a rose because you've got these uh, petals that are covering up uh, other petals you're going to have these uh, somewhat almost perfect grayscales. So it's a series of lines but it's also a series of these as uh, seen here you've got a really dark area and as it goes up towards where the light would be hitting it it's, uh, it's not a harsh uh, change it's a very very slow uh, progression of going from dark to light and you'll notice there's a ton of little areas in this picture that are you know essentially the exact same thing like with that area you've got it's a little more subtle but towards the left it was it's very dark and as it moves towards the right it gets uh, considerably lighter so you'll see a lot of these uh, in the rest of the um, the rows where it's really a combination obviously of lines but the darker values, more often than not, are really part of a gray scale. So it would uh, be a good idea to practice gray scales in general to uh, make sure that you understand that uh, transition where you're blending, trying to be seamless from dark to light in creating a gray scale. So there you have it, a uh, realistically drawn rose. It's not like hyper realism, but um, it's something, you know, gets you started on trying to figure out how to really do these measurements and how not to get frustrated. You know, you got the picture, uh, is the reference photo as close as possible to the drawing. You're not trying to draw too big or too small, but check out that first 
video in the series which will go over these techniques in much greater detail and will really illustrate, pardon the pun, uh, that you can do this. It uh, can be thought of differently. It can be thought of as a, a much more simplistic, um, I guess, way of drawing anything, really. So it, uh, this happens to specifically deal with the rows, but you can take these techniques and draw anything realistically. So thanks for watching. Be sure to check out that first video in the series, and hopefully there will be another one in the future.